So I want, hold on, I want this half of the audience to say, Mark, ready, three, two, one. Mark! And this half of the audience is going to say, Shepard, three, two, one. Shepard! All right, you know how this goes. Mark! Thank you, Emma. I appreciate you a lot. Ah! Phoenix in the summer! It sucks! Hotter than hell. I have just, this is now the seventh weekend in a row that I've been in a convention. And I've been in Washington, Bucharest, Birmingham, Rome, Melbourne, Sydney, home, and now I'm here. And uh, it's just, it's an amazing thing. The spellings of your names are a little different around the world. But other than that, it's exactly the same. It's the most wonderful, wonderful thing to do is to get to see you on. You're welcome. You're very welcome. While you were brought up to be polite, I like that, but shouting out is the opposite. <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> I can sit here and talk to myself all day because it's like I just love the sound of my voice. <laughs> Especially when it's broadcasting this many people in a room. But uh, the way I love to torture you and give you a really hard time. Oh wow, you're signing my stuff. <laughs> you're signing my stuff. <laughs> Where's the other lines? I think I'll see if they're any better. I don't like the look of that one. It looks a bit weird. I love it too. So where are they? No, they're gone. Are they all the way over at the back or something? No, that's it. Who cares? So we might as well all go home then. Well, the way I like to do this, I like to torture you as much as I can by getting you to ask me questions and then I will do everything I can to not answer them. Exactly! You've been anywhere near in my panels, you know that's the fact. So, get up, tell me the question. <laughs> you don't have to touch it, they'll do all that stuff. Sorry. Tell me, speak up. Um, I so I... see it. <laughs> don't have no pressure. The lights are on. Um, look, look up the entire universe. <laughs> watching you. Turn around, turn around. Look, like look, turn around, look. Don't get nervous, just turn around. Which I thought was hysterical. Oh my god. Wasn't it Aaron Neville singing Everybody Plays the Fool? Yeah. I was like, really? Because when we shot it, Phil originally said to me, uh, you're going to be listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> he came on and I'm listening to Aaron Neville going, that is the weirdest thing ever. Because if you look at my face, I'm listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> 
So pretty much the answer to your question, which is not really an answer at all, is, uh, is the fact that whatever it is that the music's on there, in my head, I'll always be, always be listening to Norwegian death metal. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Are there any other lines? Just this line. Is there another line? Oh, there's a line there, please. Okay, I'll alternate. Go for it. I have two questions for you. That's not good enough. <laughs> Did you write them down? Do they have bullet points? Is it one question with a follow-up, or is it two distinct and different questions? So you're hogging the line. All these people who are you so like you now absolutely detest you because you're taking extra time. And you haven't even asked the question yet. What's wrong with you? Sorry, what was your question? Uh, I can't be I can't be that mean. Is Moose and Squirrel your favorite nickname for Sam and Dean? Is Moose and Squirrel? Who's mm -hmm. getting confused? Is Moose and Squirrel? Are Moose and Squirrel? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, I mean, my brain goes. Is? Are? Is that yours? You never know which one to use, right? It's just one of those things that happens. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Moose and Squirrel. We, we, we tried all the stuff before. Giraffe, Gigantor, Mop-Headed Lumberjack. Oh God, that's just... The best moment in the whole thing is the fact that I'm talking to, I'm talking to, uh, to Dean and I'm in my burnt out place because they've eaten my tailor and everything's gone wrong. Look what I've reduced to. And um, as I walk back into the room I say, where's your moose? And it's the most flat statement of all of them. Where's your moose? And he goes, oh, he wouldn't. It was so perfect. It was so absolutely perfect for what he is. And it's stuck. And now there's musketeers. I mean, all of that. It's all really funny. It's all really good. I mean, some of you, I don't know. How many people here do not watch Supernatural? Kill them! They've got them outnumbered. Take them to the door. You will, don't worry. You will. I'm that guy you play catch up on. Whatever show I'm on after a while, you catch up. Okay. Oh! There's a reason you're on that, because you liked it, it's good. Um, sorry, what was the question again? No, the best part about Moose and Squirrel, the best part about Moose, the end of season, season Dick, what's that, seven? Season Dick is seven, right? Season Dick. Dick, 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 dick. So wait, did you ever see the did you ever see the outtake reel they had of that? Which is just the, every time the word dick was said. The name Dick Roman. Dick 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 so selfish. They don't hate you for this. Look at this. There's a trail behind it. Um, yeah, I mean, that was fun because the end of that was I added that thing of the original was written as Sorry Sam. You know, so, so taking Kevin and they jumped and they, they disappeared. And then we get that set up that whole beginning of season 8 thing. But uh, that, was, that was the nicest time I ever used Moose. Well, I wanted to say, I said, I've got to say Moose, I can't say Sam. It just doesn't fit. Because then Moose becomes personal. And that's when, at the end of season seven, Moose became, sorry Moose, you know, it was, it was an affectionate term. And then, when it really got funny, was not Moose. And that's the first time. Do you have a follow-up question? Did you, two points. Did you know your character would become the king of hell? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, that was kind of the plan. That was the idea. <sighs> yeah, what did you think? <laughs> Go. You want to sit down now? <laughs> Thank you. There's a lot of work in here. This is good. Thank Happy birthday. Thank you. You just reminded me I'm old. 
am 50 years old. You know the plan for that? I didn't expect that to happen. I did everything I could possibly do to make that not happen. Trust me, you, 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 know, you don't die, that's sort of what you end up with. I can't hear you. Please go to the back of the line. Your Majesty is <laughs> Thank you. T, Your Majesty. T, thank you, Amber. I love the hair. Matches the screw. There's a lot of TARDIS blue around here. Are oh, you guys watch Doctor Who? I've never seen it. Is that any good? So, I love you, BSG is the lawyer. And where else they're to Sorry, did we, were we introduced? Yes, I'm Scott. Hey, nice to meet you, Scott. How are you doing? Good, good. Where are you from? Phoenix. Very cool. Uh, next question. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Anyways, um, they killed your character off in uh, Warehouse 13. This isn't a question, you know. <laughs> well, no, no, the, 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 the question. So when they brought you back, what are your thoughts on them bringing you back as, like, totally evil? as wanting to destroy everything that you see. I should have had a goatee in order to follow the rules. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I should have had a full goatee. I mean, we established this, you know, middleman, same thing. The goatee, it works. You know, you have to follow the rules. We have rules, don't we? Yeah. Just can't break the rules. Um, the Warehouse 13 experience was, was, was fascinating. It was, uh, I think it was a bit of a surprise that it closed so quickly. And uh, it was nice to be asked to, to come and help finish it up. I appreciate that. Did I answer your question? No? Good. Don't break that. It's okay. We're good. We don't. I'm cool. What are you looking at? Hi. Hello. I also love tea. It's the best. You do? Uh, I, my question is related to your... I mean, they are some of the smartest people you'll ever meet. The writers on the show are just so 
evilly witty. And they do their best not to tell me what they're going to do. They do their best to just sort of throw stuff at me and then me giggle when I read it. And uh, it's brilliant. It's so much fun to do. I love that speech. I mean, how much more human can you get than David Bowie and girls? <laughs> I think it's brilliant. But yes, I, I would say Hannah would be the relatable character. <laughs> You're my money, Moose. Thank you for your question. Pleasure. Do you like the tea? Cool. Now that's dressing up. Love it. Congratulations. Okay, so my question is, watching all the behind the scenes of Supernatural, uh, Jared and Jensen are notorious for their pranks. Have you been a victim of them or a part of them? I've never been asked this question before. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a victim of their pranks? Yes, I do. You mean the farting? <laughs> the picking up and shaking? <laughs> I'm still Jared now. Um, no, they're really remarkably kind to me. And they, they torture Misha. I mean, they absolutely <laughs> torture Misha. They make Misha's life hell. <laughs> they didn't just pie him. That, you know, Jensen hit Misha with a pie. Beautifully timed. Jared hit him with a pie that was with sufficient force to push Misha's head through the side of a bed. Sometimes Jared reminds me of the tick. I expect him to turn around and say, Spoon! Unfortunately, that probably makes me half. So. Look at the face. Um, do they play pranks? What? They're afraid of me? No, they're not. They just think, no. Jared picks me up at will in Shakespeare. It's kind of ridiculous. He is so strong. You have no idea how strong he is. Ten feet taller than me? Listen, listen. I'm only short on Supernatural. Daniil, uh, Jensen's wife, has a great story, which is when, uh, uh, when she's saying, oh yeah, my husband's on Supernatural. And they go, which one is he, the tall one or the short one? <laughs> he's, I think he's like 6'1", 6'2". He's like, yeah, yeah, the short one. And then I join the show, and it's like, is he <laughs> the tiny one? I think his head has its own zip code. <laughs> it's up there. His head in the clouds. Do they play pranks? You see it on the reel. They film everything. Anytime we do anything mean to anybody, we make sure somebody's filming it. <laughs> That's just the way we do it. We work hard and we play hard. And it's a fantastic place to be. Does that answer your question? Yeah. What am I doing answering questions? <laughs> it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. What? I'm going to be over on this for a while. Discuss with your friends behind you why I won't be coming back this way again. Too soon? I mean, what? Hey! My name's Mark II. Your name's Mark II? It's not a very good name. I mean, your parents didn't like the idea that it was just a Mark, they call you Mark II. Were they watching me at the time? No. We know there's going to be a mark, but we're going to make you mark too. And it should be mark as well, actually. Sorry, mark. My question is, now that you at least taken over, is that after would you be interested in being back on Dr. Would I be interested in being one of the, on one of the coolest shows in the history of the universe? Uh, you know, playing with some of the greatest actors that have ever come out of it anywhere, Britain and everywhere else. Would I be interested in doing that again? Nah. <laughs> nah. Leave them alone. It's, it's a fantastic thing. The Who, the Who thing was the, like, the greatest blessing you could possibly imagine. It was the, the nicest, most amazing group of people. I got a phone call and it was like, uh, you want to be on Doctor Who? I'm like, 
what? I'm trying to work out a dignified way of getting back on the stage. Just. Um, I'm going this way. I might never come back, so hold on. So much so they gave me a, a, a red box developers we to play with and I used to have all sorts of ideas. I had to give it back. I mean, you're not allowed to own them. They just give you like a hard drive. Hey, play games. So it is a perk of what I do that I get to do that stuff. The stuff we used to get in trouble for. Like I've, I've said this before, there's people here, people here have heard me speak before and most of what I say is on the internet and I, I don't like to repeat myself but there are some things which are absolutely true. Um, I'm marveling at the fact that 20 years ago, you'd have been beaten up for right now. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> because that green doesn't... No. Um, <laughs> I mean, dead serious every second. I think it is the most fantastic thing that I can come to Phoenix. The same as if I go to San Diego or I go anywhere else in the world and go to Eastern Europe because it was just in Eastern Europe and go any of these places. And you guys are wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're wearing your fandom on your sleeve. You guys are wearing what you love what you love. What? <laughs> you okay? Can we help you? <laughs> Is there anything we can do? Okay, just making sure you're okay. You look like you're in a little discomfort. Sorry, I was just trying to be nice. I won't bother next time. <laughs> Die! <laughs> I would feel so bad. <laughs> That's the sickest conversation I've ever had in my life. Thank you for that, they really put it. Um, uh, I just think it's fantastic. I think the shit that we used to get beaten up for at school, the stuff that nobody would ever give us a job to do, you, know, you, used, to, you used to have to work in a video store if you, if you cared about watching stuff that wasn't 
mainstream or whatever. You had to find a way of getting what you got. Now we have the internet, now we have all these things. Now we are a monetarized asset. Now they're actually pandering to us. It's the most amazing thing. It's cool. It's cool to have different colored hair. When I was 12 and I had orange hair, it wasn't cool. It was like, what the hell is that? And that's the thing. And I love that. And I love that about these calories. I told, I told you these things before. Um, I work in a I work in a medium where we, I, I came from live music and live theatre and it's my love to have an audience, to interact with another human being, somebody breathing in and out, it's just the greatest thing to do, right? The interaction, not to do. That's <laughs> what it is, I guess. Um, God, that was an easy shot. Um, what it is, no, no, seriously, it's, um, the most fantastic thing about it is that, is that uh, uh, I travel the world and I get to interact with an audience that I did not get to interact when we were making the television show. We made the television show and there's 150 of our friends there and we do everything we can and we put it all together and we make it the best we can possibly make it. Everybody puts every ounce of thing of love that they can put into this to make this work. And we give it to our post-production people and they put all their love and hope and fix it and make it better and then they add music to it and they try to make it the greatest thing. Just so that you'll turn the damn thing on and go, <gasps> every now and then. And that's all we're looking for. All we're looking for is that you get as excited about it as we did making it. That's what we're looking for. It's not a cynical thing, it's a love thing. We love it with our whole hearts. Wouldn't do it if we didn't. That's the truth. And then, but we don't have you. When I did, when I did Battlestar, we would have screenings. The show, who here hasn't seen Battlestar Galactica? Tell people to shut up. We're all fans in here. We don't, we don't rag on other people. You don't spoil anything. They'll take the outside and kill you if you spoil it. <laughs> don't do that. But um, you will. You will see it. You know why you'll see it? Because it's a piece of science fiction that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there's very few of those, trust me. Most of them are So it's a fantastic piece of work. Not just because I'm in it, I do rather well in it. But... <laughs> It was a fantastic piece of work before I was in it, and it's a fantastic piece of work 25 years from now. It's a brilliant piece of television. Well worth watching. Start watching the West Wing. It's more interesting than most. So, we do our stuff. We used to have screening parties, and we used to watch it. You watch it with an audience, and, and you, it was just the most amazing thing to hear oohs and ahs and gasps. You know, I've seen, I've seen Galactica dropped into, into atmosphere on a screen, and the sound was immense. And every single person in the theatre was like, <gasps> it was the most incredible shared experience. Those are the things that it used to be going to the cinema when, you, when, when I was a boy, when I was little, the last Saturday morning cinema, those things. And now we're on TV. And now we're on TV and you turn it on. Well, you guys don't, you just steal it from the internet. <laughs> Too soon again? <laughs> and you buy the DVDs and you do the rest of that. No, I know. So, but here's the thing, is we're not there with you to share that experience. And the greatest joy that I have is that I get to come here and I get to share that experience sort of postpartum. Do you know what I mean? Better or better phrases for me to use, but you know what I'm saying. But that it's after we've given it up. And to have that, that love come back to us at this level is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And I thank you so much for that. in life are done with cynicism. A lot of things are created with cynicism. A lot of things are created on the back of other things. If something beautiful is made and then everybody copies it. Right? And we're different. We're a different audience than the audience used to be. We're like the audience in the 40s. You go if you want to. You, we watch it if we want to watch it. We don't watch it because they make this. We've got more than three channels. You know? We choose. We vote with our feet and our money. Right? And we're a powerful lobby, and if you, you know, if you keep fighting for the stuff that you love, they'll make better stuff. That's, that's what I believe, and I think you, you are just as important. I'm part of you, and you are just as important. We are just as important in this land of commerce as, as, as 
any other decision that's out there. Will they like it? That's what they're afraid of now. Will they like it? It's brilliant. It's a great time to be in TV. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, that one? Yeah. Sorry guys, I ramble, but it's fun. So, I was just wondering... I love what... how you started a sentence with so. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Go on. Um, You're wondering what? I was wondering when you were cast as Badger on Firefly, uh, did you think you were going to have the experience you had with the casting crew on the show? That's a brilliant question. That is the best phrased question I've ever heard on that subject. <laughs> okay, fine. No, I didn't. No, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be that cool. I didn't know those people were going to be that wonderful. I didn't know that Nathan Fillion was going to make me sandwiches and ask me how I was doing. <laughs> He's a fantastic human being. Those people were so immensely loving. But I've had that the whole way through. It's amazing. The stuff that I really love to do. The stuff that sort of called my name, do this, you're gonna love it. You know? Battlestar? Firefly? I mean, Supernatural? Doctor Who? These people are just magical. These are people who love their work, who love to work. And what better, better thing to do in life than have a job that you love doing? Right? You're, not the best. you're right, I didn't expect that. I had no idea that they were that cool. I went in and tried to be all like, you know, see how important I am. And they were just kind and loving and fun and wonderful. You do know that originally Joss wanted to play Badger. So when I met Joss, he had a beard. He was very rough. I was like, something wrong with him? Has he been out drinking too late? And, so. and uh, it, was, it, was, it was just very odd. I couldn't work out why he was giving me, I mean, he was really on what I was doing. And then Adam Baldwin, who I've known for years and years and years and years and years and years, and years and great, great, great man, said, uh, you know, he wrote it for himself. <laughs> That's why he's riding me hard like a pony. But I think it came out beautifully. The reason why we miss Firefly so much, you want to know the reason why we miss Firefly so much? Because it was stolen from us. It didn't die. It didn't die. It didn't die. It didn't die. Take it away. It got taken away as a product of its time. If it was out now, can you imagine? What if it came out like three years ago? A totally different climate. If it came out on cable, if it came out on AMC, or it came out on a, a channel like that, fascinating. So we can hope, you know. We keep building this stuff, and the geeks have inherited the earth. We're safe. <laughs> Nice hat. Thank you. Um, I was you gonna ask me a silly who love question? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I was wondering oh. what your favorite parts and least favorite parts about playing Crowley are. Favorite parts? Mm -hmm. Here down. <laughs> <laughs> What's not to love doing? I get to be rude, obnoxious. <laughs> People. I get to say stuff that nobody should be allowed to say to anybody. No one in the history of tortures me, torture me, torture me, you're a torture me. I almost peed myself when I heard that. I was like, are you kidding? I had to work out how to make it make sense without being disgusted at the fact that the sentence ends with a preposition. Is that what about crowd? What bugs Crowley is like, no one, you know, he's saying something and he's going to, and he ends with a preposition and it's like, <laughs> no one else you torture, 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 tor
nice. <laughs> it's the fun thing, you know, hearing things for the first time. Sorry, did you have a question? <laughs> does our off-camera dialogue for us and she's brilliant at it. I love her dearly. She's like, um, I have this for you. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then you can't stop. <laughs> and there's Paul Osric sitting in the chair going, Do you like the stuff that's going on between Dean and Crowley, yes? <laughs> but you don't like the end of season nine, do you? <laughs> Ooh, a divided house. I love it. I love it. Who here has not seen the finale? of science fiction. You don't go down to the pub if you don't want to know what the score is. <laughs> Where's that football? It's one of the other. Favourite parts? That's a favourite parts. Least favourite parts? Shake. <laughs> the sore neck. I used to be a tall actor. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Okay, so. Oh, right. I was. Gonna... I'm sorry, but that face you just said okay is an opening line. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yes, okay. So I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. To watch has to be the French mistake. It's been <laughs> always been pissed that I'm not in it. I've always been pissed that I'm not in it because I should have been in it. But I wasn't. So, and my favourite one to film, I think, thus far has been the end of season eight. The end of season eight was a magical thing for us. Wow. It was just an amazing time. We shot, thanks to the producers, we shot that mostly in sequence. Meaning, I mean, you know, you have to shoot. When you do a TV show, you have to shoot. Economically, so if you're going to be in that room in scene one and scene 27, you have to shoot that all in one day. You know, you can't just go there and then come back and go and come back, it costs too much money. So you have to plan out what you're doing. And what they did was they planned out three days in that church, which was built on set. The exterior was built in the middle of nowhere, the interior was built on stage. So the interior is wet leaves and dirt, and it just has that feel to it. It's actually indoors. It's like somebody went into your living room and put leaves in it and soaks them down every hour. It's like the most amazing place. And we lived in there for three days. So we did all the Abaddon scenes, all the stuff, all the all the, the girls part, all the me singing changes, all this, all the stuff. And we did it in order, which made it beautiful. So the build worked. And I have to tell you, that crew is the greatest crew I've ever worked with for one reason. They supported us through every moment of what we did. They made it easy and effortless for us to hit those highs that we were trying to hit. The other actors, Jensen was off camera, meaning he's not actually being filmed. Off camera with me for six hours doing his stuff and he never let the intensity out. And it became one of my favorite things I've ever done. I think it was a really, really cool, all of us, there wasn't anybody in that, that, that last section that wasn't amazing. And it was just, we felt like we were all walking in the same direction and it was such an honor to do that. Thank you. Anyone else want to 
questions. I never answer questions. What's wrong with me? Must be the heat. <laughs> Hello. Hello. No. <laughs> Is there a name? That's your name. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? It's obvious. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> so? Is there any way you can try and get Osric back? And? Why do they want to? It's annoying. <laughs> and? Have you been watching Kate Mulgrew on Orange is the New Black? Woo! She's actually really good in Orange is the New Black. She's yeah, really good. She's really good. it's a great show. It's a really good show. I don't have as much time to watch it, so I play catch up way late. And then every time I catch up, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. Just watch it today. Um, very good season. Just watch them? Yes. It's, yeah, it was because uh, all the promos are out, mm -hmm. all the discs are out for, for any consideration. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. Uh, and also bring Osric back? Why? <laughs> you like Kevin? Yeah! Lumpy. Yeah. Well, doesn't well, sound well, like you're particularly well, sure. Well, you like Kevin? Yeah! Crowley and Kevin. Crowley and Kevin, City of the Tree. Nah. He doesn't kiss as well as Bobby. <laughs> or Jim. That's the same as Bobby is doing. Right. Oh, yeah. But, but Jim is working with him. Listen, if I knew that Osric was or wasn't coming back, would I tell you? No. no. Next question. <laughs> Go on. Faster. You can stand up if you want to. <laughs> Hi. So, in, if you had control of the supernatural in everything... Like I have control of you right now. Everything that went with it, how would you end it, the final episode, with directing and producing and everything? How would you have that end? Interesting. The way it should be, with Crowley in a bath, <laughs> listening to Norwegian death metal. Angel dude, and I was like, oh look, there's my name. It's like, so up, see, this whole thing does nothing for me. Baby in a trench coat, I mean, really? Hi. Um, How you doing? Alright. Having fun? Yeah. Love the glasses. Thank you. Um, I swear.
don't think you have any power. <laughs> today, booth one, I will be doing any of the photo ops that anybody has missed. Please show up. Saturday, 5.30, I'll do a second one too in photo booth two. So if you haven't hit your photo ops, come find me and do that. So I found some people that were miserable and didn't get photo ops. So I said, can you open it up again? And if you want, come find me. I've got a 6 p.m. in booth one, and tomorrow I'll have a 5.30 in booth two, okay? Are you still here? <laughs> One of the two things that I love to play. You know the two things I love to play? Okay. Oh, sarcasm. We really have dated. <laughs> two things that I believe are worth playing is I either want to play the man who sells out, sells out the mission before they've even left the planet. Right? <laughs> Dr. Zachary Smith in Lost in Space, the guy that screws it before they started. Uh, William H. Macy in Fargo. He's screwed before he starts, and you just know it's never going to get better, and it's always going to be there. Dr. Gaius Baltar. From the beginning, great roles, brilliant roles to play, right? Guys that, the guys that screwed up on day one, and we're going to try to spend the rest of their life trying to fix it. Great characters, right? Or, the last sane man in the universe. Romo Lankin. Um, Crowley. Arjun. Think about it. They're all Eddie Albert in Green Acres. Everybody around him is insane, and he's going... <laughs> just paying attention to what I'm saying, everything will be fine! <laughs> and that's the essence. Those are the characters that we're playing, but they're not evil. Evil is in the, behind, in the eye of the beholder, right? Evil has always been in the eye of the beholder. Do you have a crown for the King of Hell? What? Do you have a crown for the King of Hell? No. Do you want one? Do you want one? No. Die my hands. It's been a fun day. Okay. <laughs> I've smoked in 10 years. I need a cigarette now. Am I, am I tall enough to reach this? I don't know. Ask yourself that question in five years. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you on behalf of my friend Peter and my friend F who are not able to be here because you're one of our very, very favorite actors. And I want to thank you for being a very complex tall, person on the Well, no, you're, tall. you're not necessarily tall. I'm really <laughs> sure. Tall. something with our time. <laughs> but you don't cross the fan streams. How hard was it to design the universe before you come in and you start screwing with it by putting other universes in it? There have been many it's like many, a bad Star Trek episode. There have been many games that have successfully crossed universes. It Kingdom never works. And she played the Final Fantasy and it was a great game. <laughs> Define the word great. Great? Great? Good? Great? Ooh, there is some great. There's some great out there. But there's a lot of good, there's a lot of mediocre, there's not a lot of great. There's great. Battlestar is great. Not because I'm in it, because it's great. It was great before I got there. Right? Star Trek was great before Star Trek was great before, before I ever watched it. Look, there's so many things that are great, you know? We 
We don't mess with that. It's like going, you are such a wonderful gymnast, we've decided you need to do this underwater. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> they did that already, didn't they? You don't cross the fence here. of the heart and they're, they're bigger and more romantic and more interesting than I woke up in the morning and went over there and shot somebody. We want to know, but in which dimension? <laughs> and why? You know? Look at, look, remember the X-Files, right? I mean, it was, it was a <laughs> one of my favorite episodes ever is Monday. Yeah. yeah. Right, the one is, I was talking to Mitch, Mitch Blake the other, the other day and he was like, I was like, that is a brilliant episode. But Darren Burroughs gets up every day and relives, relives the same event. He straps a bomb to himself and goes to the bank. And it's such a, but it's, yeah, of course, but we've always had Kim directed that episode, so Kim Manners, Kim Manners directed that episode. But that's the stuff that you go, but what if, but when, but how, why does it do that? And that's what we have to do. We have to do that with what we love. We have to promote what we love. We have to fight for what we love. You have to tell them what you like. You have to show them and vote with your money, with you know all the things that you do, little Kickstarter things here and there, supporting stuff, downloading stuff, making sure that the stuff that you love is made popular. Otherwise, they're going to serve to you what they want to serve to you, right? 
We have a duty to do that, you know, for us, by us, really, you know. Do you want to tell me I'm done? Three minutes? I got one more. Oh, sorry to let you guys down. I could do this all day. Oh, now, what better way to end a day? Oh, then leave now. I owe you guys, okay? I will hug you all eventually. But I owe you, okay? Thank you. Uh, well, first, just fantastic. And I love you. Thank you. Um, I am going to cross the fandom streams, but I'm the Princess of Magic, so I get to play girls if I want. I would very much like to know on the one hand, you have Crowley, who is essentially the ultimate deal maker, and on the other hand, you have Jim Sterling, who by the last few years never loses. So, I just would love to know what would happen if Crowley tried to make a deal with Sterling. If it would be an unstoppable force between a moving object situation. <laughs> well, we we kind of did that with with uh, Christian Kane's character, didn't we? He's a man who never. Elliot's a man who never loses a fight, and Sterling's a man who never loses. So the question was whether. Um, excuse me. The question was. When my then, whatever, 11 year old son turned around to them and go, Why don't you have my diet fight Christian? I was like, Oh, thank you. It's how to do that. So, the same imagination, John Rogers, Amy Berg, all writers that we love in our universe, for Eureka, for everything from Transformers to whatever. That's their, when that question was posed to them, that's what they did with the question. So, it does come from, stay, stay from the same answer. But I'm going to give you the best answer that I can end this conversation, sadly, with, which is this is, if that's what you want to see, write it. I'll probably show up and have to. Eventually, I'll be in everything, right?